All right, guys, going to do a little video on symmetry of polar graphs. We have three types of symmetry that we will see, and it has been a long time since we did symmetry in the rectangular or Cartesian coordinate plane, but we did that way back in, I think it was chapter one. So we will find some similarities here between that. So uh, you should have already done the top of this worksheet and graphed a cosine graph and a, a basic sine graph. So I'm going to start off with hopefully um, what we should see, something like a sine graph. So I'm just going to put sine theta. And we'll say, I don't know, this pretend this is one. And I'm going to draw, hopefully we found out these were circles. I'm going to draw my best circle here. So this is just an example of something we might see. And I kind of skipped over, but this graph would have symmetry with respect to the line pi over 2, which is this line right here, like where our y-axis would be. So we don't call it y-axis symmetry anymore because we technically don't have a y-axis. But there's our line theta equals pi over 2. And you can kind of check for this symmetry, but we'll say that if this graph has the point r theta on it, then it also has a point, and here's where the tricky part comes into play, right? There are many, many different ways we can write any of these points. So one way we might write this point is R, and then think about like almost reference angles here, right? This guy would be angle theta. So this would also be angle theta. So we could call this point over here R pi minus theta. So if uh, it has the point r theta and r pi minus theta, let's say like r 30 degrees and r 150 degrees, that might be an indication that there is uh, theta equals pi over 2 symmetry. But again, remember there are lots of ways we could write these points. So another way this point might be written is if it had a negative r value, then think what that would mean. That would mean we are halfway across our coordinate plane, which would mean our angle would need to be negative theta. So there are lots of different ways uh, that we can write these points. <clears throat> and that is something like there is an algebraic check for these. But the tricky part is it might not always um, be as evident as before. So they say for polar graphs that if the point fails the symmetry test, or if a symmetry test fails, it doesn't mean there isn't symmetry. But for this one, like we did way back in chapter one, we had put in like a negative x and see if we got the opposite. So for sine theta, so r equals sine theta, if I put in a negative theta, this is the same since sine as is the opposite function as opposite my original function. So that would equal opposite r, right, opposite of the original. So we can still do those algebraic checks, but again, if they fail, it doesn't mean there is not symmetry. So just a quick overview of that. So with that in mind, symmetry with respect to the polar axis would be some of our cosine graphs. And just a basic cosine graph would be a circle with symmetry over the polar axis. So if we have a point r theta on this graph, then hopefully you guys are thinking of ways we can write that opposite point down below. This could be r negative theta, or I always like to write too what the negative r might be. So the negative radius would be on the other side of the coordinate plane. And that's something we kind of just dealt with, really just using all of these reference angles, so pi minus theta. Could be possible points on graphs with polar axis symmetry. All right, the last type of symmetry we'll talk about here is similar to origin symmetry. We call it symmetry with respect to the pole. Now, we haven't seen any of these graphs yet, but I'm going to uh, draw one here that we will see later in the section. It's an r squared graph, which is a little different. And it's r squared equals sine of 2 theta. And this guy, we'll find out later what he's called, but almost looks like a figure 8 um, going across our graph. So, like, imagine origin symmetry. But 
like we said, this is symmetry with respect to the pole. So if I have a point R theta, it's like rotating it 180 degrees around. So really that would be adding pi to our angle. Uh, and again, think about what this might be as a negative radius value, and that would just be right where our angle is, so, or negative r theta. That would be symmetry with respect to the pole. And um, if you put a negative r right into this equation, nothing would change. So that's one way we could see that algebraically. But remember, trying to emphasize that if you do check, if you sub in a, a negative r value or a different theta value, and uh, your equation doesn't turn out the same or opposite, it doesn't mean that there is not symmetry.